Hello and welcome to another edition of Next Wave as we are pleased to be joined by Joseph Greffa, who the Barracuda signed this offseason to an American Hockey League contract. Joseph, we got to ask you, and we ask a lot of players as we get more comfortable with who you are and uh, what you want fans to call you by. Do you prefer Joe or Joseph? Uh, it doesn't really matter, I guess, but uh, I think uh, I think Joe is kind of what, uh, what I've been getting called lately, so I think that I'll go with that. It's a little easier for broadcasters, I guess. You give us some options. We can we can call you Joe or Joseph. Um, you're you're back home in Toronto. That's where you're from. We got to ask you. You know, this is a hotbed of hockey, maybe the even the epicenter of the game. What was it like being a youngster growing up in that area and playing youth hockey and be surrounded by you know so many good players, um, so many pros from that area? What was that experience like as a young kid? Well, definitely. I think, uh, you know, being from Toronto, it's like, you know, every rink you go to and it, it's just always hockey and, and all the guys love it. And, you know, growing up too, when you play minor hockey, you know, there's so many, you know, great players uh, that play there and uh, all that. So just going there, I think, you know, you kind of being from Toronto too, it's kind of easy to fall in love with hockey and all that. So I think, uh, you know, it's pretty easy to gravitate towards it. Was it a no brainer for your parents to get you into the game? Is that just kind of built into the culture or was it something that, that, uh, you know, they forced upon you. What, what was the situation? How did you get into playing? Uh, it, was, uh, it was one of those things, like, I, you know, I started being, uh, playing soccer when I was younger. I think that was my main sport. And then uh, my sister figure skated. And then, so I'd always go watch her figure skate. And, and then instead, there's always guys playing hockey on the other side. And I just always rather watch them than her figure skate. So then I kind of just said, hey, I want to play hockey and try it out. And, you know, I enjoyed it. And uh, I liked it better than soccer, actually. So then I, you know, kind of stuck with that and, uh, you know, I'm with hockey. People know you uh, as a quick you know, skilled forward, a guy who can fill the back of the net. You mentioned your sister was, you know, a figure skater. Do you feel like you got your your light, quick feet maybe from her? Yeah, no, definitely. I actually did uh, figure skating for two years when I was younger with, with her too. So, uh, you know, I didn't I didn't really enjoy it back then. I didn't think it was, you know, too fun. Like not too many guys were figure skating. But uh, I think I look back on it. I think it did definitely help uh, for the quick feet and uh, the quickness. You were selected by the Kitchener Rangers in the fourth round back in 2015, the OHL priority draft. Was the Ontario Hockey League always a goal of yours, or did you ever consider even going, you know, the American collegiate route? I know. I think, well, growing up, um, you know, Toronto had a team in the OHL, and we actually built it a guy too. So, you know, from a young age, I was kind of always like, oh, I love the OHL and all that. But, you know, especially, you know, my draft year leading up, I was honestly leading towards college. I thought the uh, you know, um, you know, I talked to a few schools and all that, and I, I liked the route and all that. And But, uh, you know, just getting drafted by Kitchener, I think, uh, you know, it was, it was a great place to play, and I heard so much about it. And, um, you know, they said, hey, if you, if you want to play at 16, you got a spot. And I just, you know, at the end of the day, I couldn't turn it down. What were a few of the schools that, that you had spoken to? Uh, I talked to, I think, uh, a bit like uh, Notre Dame and all that, like New Hampshire, kind of a few schools like that. Uh, you know, so you know, it would have been pretty cool to maybe go to one of those schools, but uh, no, I'm happy, uh, you know, going to, going to the OHL and, uh, you know, I'm happy, uh, you know, kind of how I developed as a player there. Well, your first four years of your five-year OHL career were played in Kitchener and the Rangers have produced some great players over the years, including the likes of current NHL stars, Gabe Landeskog, Jeff Skitter, a guy who has a figure skating background, Nazem Kadri, John Gibson. How did your game evolve over those four years? And were you pretty familiar with, you know, the program's history and who had come before you? Well, yeah, I know definitely. Um, you know, when you, when you think of OHL, you know, you, you obviously, you know, you said, I think you think of like the London Knights and, and the Kitchener Rangers are like the two kind of like, you know, top, you know, place to play obviously because, you know, such a great fan base and all the guys that have, uh, came through there and all that. So, no, I, I remember always, you know, watching, you know, Kitchener because you know, I was a big fan of like Murphy and Landis Scott kind of, you know, watching the, the OHL and all that so uh, no definitely I knew a lot of the history and you know it's, it's pretty cool going to that rink and seeing all the banners and all the guys that play there and just you know kind of walking through and seeing all the history so you know, it was pretty cool to be a part of it for uh, four years. You played both defense and forward during your junior career the Barracuda brought you in to be a forward but where did you kind of gain that type of versatility having the ability to kick back and also play at the forward spot? Yeah, well, you know, growing up, I was always a D-man. Uh, I don't know why. I just, you know, my, my, I was, I guess, I was a pretty good skater young, when I was younger. So, you know, my, uh, you know, my dad put me on, uh, put me out as a D, and then uh, kind of stuck to me all the way up. And then in Bantam, uh, my team uh, needed some goals. You know, we weren't scoring too much, so the coach switched me and uh, one of the forwards, and uh, just for the the weekend, and it ended up uh, doing pretty good. I think got a few goals, and then the team won. So, 
kind of stuck there. And then I got drafted as a forward to the OHL. But, uh, you know, my first year we had a bunch of injuries on D and, and we didn't really have any call-ups. So you know, the coach is like, hey, you know, we have no D. Like, can, can you uh, can you play? And I said, you know, why not? Like, you know, I, I enjoyed playing D when I was younger. So I said that uh, should be fun. And then, um, you know, I, I, I kind of flopped uh, D and forward for my first four years. So I enjoyed it. But, uh, you know, last year in uh, Ottawa I played uh, forward the whole year. So, you know, I'm, I'm assuming that I'm pretty much just going to stay forward from now on. What kind of tendencies did you build as a defenseman that allowed you to go up to forward and, and be a well-rounded, you know, 200-foot type of player that, you know, you really evolved into in your final year of junior? But how did that kind of help you at the forward position, having that defensive background? Well, I think it helps a lot. I think on the defensive side, um, you know, when you play D, obviously, you know, you're defending. So, so I think um, – just the way, I, you know, being a smaller guy too, I think it helped me like use my body and kind of use my stick uh, and put into the right positions to kind of win the battles and win the puck. So I think definitely, you know, playing, you know, playing defense has helped my, uh, my defensive game uh, on forward. So last year you participated in the LA Kings rookie camp. You also tried out for their American league team, the Ontario rain. You eventually go back to junior. You're traded from Kitchener to Ottawa, eventually finish your career that final season in Ottawa with the 67s. But, how was that overall experience like, and how did you kind of measure your game where you were at against pro guys? Did you feel like it gave you a good idea where you were at? Yeah, no, I think it was good. I think, you know, going to the, you know, the obviously, you know, the rookie camp and then going to the American League camp, I think, you know, definitely kind of gives you a feel of, you know, what to expect in the practices and like, you know, kind of the guys you're going to come up against and all that. So I think it was good for me to experience that and, and you know, bring obviously come back to juniors and kind of, you know, bring that experience from my, you know, my away year. And then, uh, you know, at least I kind of know a bit what to expect, kind of the pace and all that uh, for next season. So I think it should be good. This past season, shortened by COVID, came to a, an end probably before you hoped. But you did finish the year, you know, setting career highs and goals and also in points. You also finished with an incredible plus 48 plus minus differential. That was a 72-point improvement from the year prior. Now, you said that you played both forward and defense throughout your career in Kitchener and then went straight up to forward and sticked with the 67s. But how do you feel like your game was able to evolve and you were able to round it out to be, you know, really a complete player that was not only putting up big-time points but also, you know, could be relied on in the defensive zone by your coaching staff? Yeah, no, definitely this year, you know, the coaches in Ottawa, you know, they, they're, they're fantastic. And, and they were on me for, uh, you know, they, you know, obviously, you know, they, you know, they don't really care as much for the offense. You know, they're, they're really like, on me to, you know, play defense and uh, well around my game kind of thing. So, you know, definitely they're on top of me, you know, back check, you know, skate hard, you know, finish my hit, being, being on the, being on the battles and all that. So definitely they're just staying on top of me. And, you know, I really bought into the system that they're playing and all that. And, and helped me so much. And, and I'm going to take, a, you know, all that I learned into next season. And I'm uh, going to be a, you know, try to be a 200 foot player. I mean, it's certainly going to bode well for you when you make that leap to the next level, because coaches constantly at the pro level are looking for guys who not only compete offensively, but they can rely on them in their defensive zone. You mentioned a few of your attributes, but for people who are not familiar in San Jose, describe the type of player you are and the style that you like to play. Uh, you know, I feel like I'm a guy, you know, I like to carry the puck, you know, I like to, you know, hold on to it and, and make plays and, uh, you know, try to create room for myself out there and all that. And, but, you know, I like to play fast. I like to move the puck in, in giving goals kind of style and all that. But, you know, I feel like I, and, uh, I definitely develop my defensive game. You know, I try to, you know, hound the puck and dog it on the defensive side. You are a, a bit of an undersized player and the trend now at the pro level is it maybe is not quite as important to be a big physical guy like it once was but as an undersized guy how were you able to kind of adjust your game to compete with those bigger bodies and how are you going to you know apply what you learned during your junior career against big kids but now you're going to go against men how are you going to kind of apply that stuff going into your first year pro yeah I know I think you know obviously I've always been a smaller guy you know so I kind of you know had to figure different things out and you know obviously in minor hockeys and going to juniors and all that you kind of have to change little things but I think you know what I'm just going to go on there and um yeah, I'm going to move my feet. I think, you know, when I'm moving my feet and I'm on the puck and I'm hounding it, I feel like, you know, that's when, that's when I'm playing good and that's when I'm feeling it. So I think, you know what, if I move my feet and I'm tenacious on the puck and going on the battles with the mindset that I'm going to win it, I think, uh, you know what, I can compete with these bigger guys. All right, we're going to ask you to put your, your scouting hat on for a moment. Your 67 teammate last year, Marco Rosi, he is expected to be a top 10 pick in the upcoming NHL draft. The Sharks do have a first rounder from the Tampa Bay Lightning He's expected to maybe go a little bit earlier than when the Sharks pick. But give us a bit of a scouting report on your former teammate. 
oh yeah, I know the sky's unbelievable player, you know, the way, you know, the way he kind of carries the puck and just sees the game and, you know, creates the space and time for himself, but also, you know, other guys and, and, you know, he's just, you know, he's quick. And, and the one thing though, I think that people don't see is how hard this guy works in practice. Like, you know, I remember coming in, you know, my first practice, he's, you know, he's the hardest working guy. He's winning the battles. He doesn't want to lose and all that. And, you know, he's telling me, Hey, you know, let's, let's be, let's be tough on the defensive zone in the, in, in the drill. And I was like, you know, I took that. I was like, wow, you know, this guy wants to compete and, you know, he doesn't want to take, you know, even practice off. So I think that's one big thing is just, you know, his work ethic and, you know, you see his skills, but it's, that's, I think what really separates him as a player. Was that surprising for you? You just came back from a professional camp. You've got a 17, 18 year old kid uh, with that type of mentality and mindset. Oh, I know. Definitely. I think, you know, I don't think you see it all the time, you know, especially, you know, a guy like him, you know, he, he's a top guy and, you know, he's unbelievably skilled and, you know, you knew he was going to put up tons of points, so, you know, maybe he can like kind of cruise and practice a bit and, you know, cause he's just going to light it up and, you know, the coach might not say anything, but, you know, right away, this guy wants to win the battles. He's tenacious on the pucks and it's, it's, you know, it's contagious at the end of the day. I see that and I say, Hey, I, I want to be work as hard as him. So, you know, definitely Kim being that hard, it pushed me too. So, you know, I'm glad I got to, you know, play with him for a year. It was, uh, it was a great experience. Okay, this is a two-part question, and Mark will maybe the answer to one of the questions, but who's the best player that you've competed against so far in your hockey career, and who would you say is the best player that you've played with? Uh, it's, oh, I got to say, best, you know, probably the best player I've played with is, um, you know, it's definitely, uh, definitely got to be Rossi. I think just, just the way, you know, what he moves the puck and, and he gets open and just how much, like, you know, time he gives you because, you know, guys are on him and, it was just, you know, it was just crazy. You know, I honestly, I, I hadn't seen much of him because, you know, in Kitchener, you only play Ottawa twice a year. So I, I hadn't really, uh, you know, seen much of him. But, you know, right away, first game I played, you know, he has five assists. I'm like, oh, my God, this guy can play. And, you know, it, it was so much fun to play with him. It, it, you know, I learned a lot from him. And I think, you know, he, I guess, you know, he learned a bit from me too, maybe. But uh, so he's definitely got to be, you know, probably the best player I've played with. And, and I guess against, I don't know, there's just been a lot of, there's been a lot of good guys, you know, I think. But, I, you know, I guess, uh you know, my first year, I guess, playing against Marner was pretty cool. I mean, you know, he was, you know, he was dominant and all that in junior, so it's pretty cool. Yeah, he was a member of the, the London Knight powerhouse, uh, powerhouse program, uh, as it usually is, but the, especially when uh, Mitch Marner was there. That's a, it's a pretty good answer right there, and he's, of course, competing right now with the Maple Leafs in the playoffs. All right, let's shift gears a little bit, a little bit more lighthearted away from the game so fans can get a better idea of who you are and your personality away from the ice. First question, if you weren't a professional hockey player, what would you be doing right now for a career? Uh, I think uh, I'd probably try to play soccer. I think, uh, you know, I was, um, you know, I, I like playing soccer as a kid and I still kind of like watching it now. So I think it would, it'd be pretty cool, you know, to, to play soccer professionally. Do you follow any of the MLS clubs? I believe Toronto has an MLS team, if I'm not mistaken. Are you, are you an avid fan as well? Or are you just more of uh, one of those guys who, who likes to play the game? Yeah, I know, I'm actually a big Toronto guy. I'm trying to see, uh, you know, they won, they won the championship a few years ago and, you know, they won, they lost last year, but no, I was a big fan when they had Javinko and all that. And, you know, I know San Jose's got a team and they're, they're, they're like, I watched a bit of the tournament coming back and, you know, they look pretty good actually. So, you know, it should be, you know, I'll probably get up to a few games down there. Yeah. It's a good time. They built a brand new stadium a couple of years ago. I think uh, it'll definitely be something you have to get out to uh, when you make your way out West. All right. Vacation destinations. What is your favorite place to visit and tell us why? Honestly, like, I'm not a big vacation guy. I haven't been uh, to many places, uh, really. So, but uh, I don't know. I guess, like, a place I want to go, I guess I want to go to Italy. But, like, I've never really been to, like, my favorite. Like, I don't know. I've been on much vacation. So, I don't really know what, like, my favorite spot would be. So, is Gareffa, is that an Italian last name? Uh, where does the Gareffa, what's the heritage behind that? Yeah, it's Italian, yeah. So, it's, uh, I think it's from southern Italy. And, uh, yeah, so my dad's Italian and then my mom's Japanese. So, kind of an interesting mix. So you'll, you'll definitely have to make your way out to Italy and uh, maybe try to find some of your uh, ancestors on your way out there. That's a good yeah. choice. I went there, uh, went there last summer. It was, uh, it was a pretty epic trip. All right, let's, uh, another question for you. Maybe it's an Italian meal, but if you had to choose one meal for the rest of your life, life excuse me, what would it be and why? Um, well, that's a tough one. I guess uh, I like, like, you know, like a seafood pasta kind of thing. I think that's, that's probably my favorite um, I don't know. I love seafood and all that. And, uh, you know, you can't go wrong with a nice little uh, tomato sauce pasta. You know, there's nothing, uh, can't beat it. All right. You're going to fit, you're going to fit into Italy quite well, especially if you're on the coast, because that's about all they serve 
serve on the menu. Um, what's uh, your favorite athlete in the world? Who is your favorite athlete in the world uh, that is not a hockey player and why? Um, well, that's a tough, but probably, you know, I gotta, I gotta go, I guess, Roy McIlroy. I think, uh, I don't know, I'm a big golf guy, I like golf and, you know, just the way he hits the ball and, and, and his demeanor and all that in the game. It's, you know, it's cool to watch and, you know what, uh, you know, he's just, you know, he's, he's fun. I think, you know, he enjoys the game kind of and, and all that. And I kind of like the way, you know, he interacts with the fans. So it's, uh, it's cool to watch. Well, if you like golf, you get, uh, get along with a lot of the guys because uh, it is a, a big golf uh, locker room. That is for sure. We got to ask you during quarantine, have you been uh, sharpening up your skills? You've been able to hit the links? Yeah, I've been, been going quite a bit. I usually go a lot in the summer, but you know what? My game, my game's been bad. It's, it's been brutal. I think, uh, you know, going down to San Jose, I think I got to pick it up a bit because, you know, I guess, you know, if you're golfing a bit down there, right? So I think I got to work on it. Yeah, we have, uh, we have golf weather uh, 365 days a year. So it's only, it's only a matter of time before you find your game again. A lot of the guys uh, like, to, like to partake, usually after practice. So you'll certainly, uh, certainly get your fair share. All right, another question for you. Um, what's your favorite genre of music? I don't know if you're the DJ in the locker room or what, but if uh, you had to choose, what's your favorite genre? You know what? Uh, I'm kind of like just an all-around guy. Like I kind of, you know, I guess you know, cause like TikTok's hot right now. So I guess like whatever, like kind of like popular songs are on there. Like I don't know. I feel like they're pretty, they're pretty good. So I don't know. Like not to really two in particular. Kind of guess what's hot right now is kind of what I'm listening to. Fair enough. It seems like there's a, there's a big mix. So if you're uh, if you get the ability to adjust, then uh, you'll be all right. All right. Another question for you. Um, what are three things that uh, fans would not know about you unless you told them? Uh, well, I guess, um, I guess one would, I, I figure skated when I was younger. I think, uh, I think that was, uh, that's a big one too. Um, yeah, I think that, uh, I mean, I guess, you know, I'm, ja I know my mom's Japanese, my dad's Italian. I guess that's one too. And, um, pff, uh, I don't even know, like, <laughs> can't so even think of it one. You mentioned that you, you've got a sister or is it just you two or is there more siblings in the family? Yeah, I just saw it's just me and my sister. So okay. you're the you're the younger of the two. Yeah, yeah. So who gets their way when everything is said and done? Who tends to get uh, get the favor of the parents? So I probably do. I think you know. I think she gives in and all that. So I think the, I'm the younger one. So I think I probably get my way more. That's a good older sister giving you uh, giving you the the benefit of the doubt. All right, um, those are some good ones. I think fans will enjoy that. All right, moving on. What are you most looking forward to about San Jose? Yeah, I, know, I think, I guess, you know, the weather, I think that's one thing. I think, um, you know, being from Toronto and, 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 you know, all the winters are cold and all that. So it's nice. I remember last year, you know, we, you know, we had to be at the rink sometimes at, uh, you know, 7.30, 7 a.m. And you're waking up at 5.30 and, and it's tons of snow on your car in Ottawa and it's like minus 20 and you're like, oh my God, what am I doing here? But so I think that that will definitely be really nice, I guess, and all that. And I guess you can golf too after practice. So that that'll be really fun. So you're living in San Jose. What's going to be the biggest thing that you miss back in Toronto? Um, I guess, I guess, uh, I think, I guess my mom's cooking. I think that, that's a big thing. I, don't, I think my parents are good cooks and all that. So I know I enjoy their food. So I think that's one uh, big thing. The last question for it, you had camp with the Ontario Rain. You're at the LA Kings rookie camp. So you were out in Southern California. You almost signed with the Kings. You end up going back to junior are your parents excited about you signing with the California team and are they going to be visiting a lot? Yeah, I know. Obviously I think, you know, they're, they, you know, uh, they, you know, they're excited for me, obviously, you know, to get a chance, uh, an opportunity and all that. And yeah, I think definitely, I think they'll be coming out quite a bit because, you know, they haven't really traveled much either. And I don't think they've been to California. So I think it'll be pretty cool. And you know, I heard San Jose is beautiful. So, you know, it should be a, uh, should be fun for them too. Well, we're looking forward to you coming out. Uh, who knows when it's going to be. It looks like December seems to be, the time in which they're hoping to get the season underway. Training camp will be a little bit before that. So hopefully we can stay on schedule. We look forward to meeting you. We look forward to you coming into the fold and being part of the group this upcoming season. We know you're an exciting player. So we can't thank you enough uh, for spending a bit of time with us. Stay healthy, stay safe, and uh, hopefully we'll see you really soon. Yeah, thank you.